नमः परमर्षिभ्यो नमः परमर्षिभ्य हरि ओम उपासका यदुपासनीय उपातवासंबाखिमूल तद्धाम दाक्षिण्यजुषा स्वूर्त जागर्तुचि मम बोधरूप अद्राक्ष अक्षीणदयानिधान आचार्य आद्यम बटमूलभागे मौन मंदस्मितूषित महर्षिलोक तमोनुद विद्राविताशेष तमो गणेन मुद्रा विशेषेण मुहुर्मुनीमाया दयया विधत्ते देवो महान्तमसी बोधम ममादेव वटमूलवासी कृपा विशेषात्तसन्निधा ओंकारूपदिश्य विद्यागध्वापाकोत ज्योतिर्यदक्षिणाूर्ति व्यासशंकरशब्दाख्यम चंदे चिद्रूपमृत शिव नमः परम शुद्धाय बुद्धा सर्वसाक्षिणे गुरव सर्वोका निमुक्ता ते नम वेदाताचारेण भासते यो सता हृदय वेदातगनाढ़ बोधगम आश्रिए निर्मूल्याहंकृति मत् निर्मलानंददायिनम निर्वाणबोधम तम सद्गु रमण भजे यत्शमात्रेण सोहमीत्मश्चय प्रत्यभिज्ञानूपेण भासते तम गुरु नुम निर्गुण निश्चल नाथ सगुणा चलांबूम वंदे च पितर आद्य बोधसतान सिद्ध अमलरजतेह भाति चिज्योतिरेक हृदय कुहर मध्य निष्क निकटपथि विचार वृत्ति सादरेण सभयमिवरेण्यम तेजसा दीप्यम करणतनुिया येरक स्वेन भाषा कबलितजगदंड पिंडमध्ये शयान सकलहृदयवास शाश्वत ब्रह्म वितरतु परशुद्धि चेतसो निवाख्य उल्लदल उल्लुणर्दो उल्लपुर उल्लर उल्लते उल्लमेन उल्लपुर उल्लवन उल्लते उल्लपड़ी उल्लदे उल्लल उणर्वाये उल्ले मरण भय मिकुव मकलरण मरण भव इला महेशन चरण मे शावर्त शावुड़ता शावुत्रण शावरो शावादर्वैशे द सेकेंड वर्स 
இந்த உள்ளது நாற்பது வி சா இட் இஸ் அபவுட் சரணாகதி சரணாகதி இஸ் த ஹையஸ்ட் ஃபார்ம் த எண்ட் த கன்க்ளூஷன் ஆஃப் ஸ்பிரிச்சுவல் லைஃப் பிரபத்தி and we spoke elaborately about sharanagati and uh, true sharanagati happens when one knows that bhagavan alone is real god alone is real and everything else is impermanent evanescent unreal maranam including my own ego so when i understand even i am not real only he alone exists i don't exist there is a two line couplet of kabir dohe it's it's called as dohe two two lines he says tu tu karta tu bhaya mujh mein rahi na hu he says by again and again singing telling you that you alone exists you alone exists oh rama now inside me i do not exist even there only you exists so this is the end of sharanagati amakrishna hmm? used to say tu tu naham naham tvam tvam i do not exist i do not exist only you exists this is sharanagati jnanam is you just explore the i investigate the i what is this i then you find that then also you find that the i thought is unreal the jiva bhava is unreal and only brahman exists that shuddha chaitanya exists in all this now now we see the song in a different way here bhagwan said am makkal makkal generally mean people but here muruganar or many other devotees they have told that am makkal bhagwan has used it means sajjana and sajjana in the spiritual sense means those who have all qualifications for the spiritual quest like discrimination dispassion uh sensory control mind control the power to endure and uh, immense faith and uh, readiness to live a completely non possessive life withdrawn life uparati and the power to meditate that is samadhanam to abide in samadhi little bit at least nididhyasana and all these things are fueled by mumukshutvam the force for liberation the power to be free if all these qualifications are there they are really noble they are they deserve this highest knowledge for such people if this high knowledge comes it is just like the example that we quoted yesterday it is just like a wick wet with oil the moment it comes in contact with fire it will be lit it will carry the flame in its body till the entire wick is burnt that is the duration tasya tavadeva chiram yavanna vimochye at a sampatsye the shruti says only to that duration to that period till his body falls is prarabdha is finished that is the period where the whole world or the seekers they get a jivan mukta after attainment he just remains appears in the space for the devotees to see to get to the knowledge all those things after that samagram pravilayate he just merges in the totality so such people ammakkal 
and they have intense longing to be free you can say it is intense longing to be free or that is mumukshatvam or you can say intense longing to attain god if you have the bhakti samskara it will come like that uh, causeless devotion hmm? sometimes you know the devotion inside hidden devotion is awakened simply by listening to bhagavan nama even bhagavan ramana's life was like that in bhagavata there's exactly a shloka which says hearing the nama of bhagavan he awakes up see generally you know when a person is initiated to some mantra like nama narayana mantra or vasudeva mantra or shiva panchakshari mantra some mantra if initiated the devotee will meditate on bhagavan's form after much 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 meditation he will have the power to hold see the divine form within and by the power of meditation at last he will see the divine form without also outside also he might see but often it happens that the devotee will be chanting many many cases are there the devotee will be chanting panchakshara or rama nama and he experiences not any divine form but experiences the nirvikalpa samadhi the experiences the self the atma the swarupa so such people they are called nirguna bhaktas hmm? they hear about bhagavan but they experience brahman madguna shruti matrena by mere listening to bhagavad guna it might be bhagavan's nama or bhagavan's story something they listen madguna shruti matrena then what happens my in me that is who is this me we will see sarva guhashaye i am that which is inhabiting every heart cave manogatihi avichinna the mind naturally flows like what gangam bhasaha ambudhau iva like the ganga incessantly courses towards the ocean like that their mind incessantly flows towards the flows towards bhagwan and who is this bhagwan he is the atma the self within in the cave of the heart and you know what bhagavatam calls this kind of bhakti very simple bhakti direct bhakti just you listen to the nama you have you attain samadhi such bhakti Bhag- bhagavatam says uh, lakshanam bhakti yogasya nirgunasya hyudahrutam this bhakti is nirguna bhakti it is not saguna bhakti there is no uh, attributes or anything associated with it it just makes the person transcend the mind all the three gunas and gets established in the nirguna swarupa atma swarupa such pure bhakti so such bhakti we see in bhagwan's life he heard arunachala nama and he experienced arunachala in fact he was carrying the implied meaning of that nama in his heart even before and he heard someone telling arunachala chanting arunachala and woke up and woke up and actually for him arunachala was the nama was tattvamasi later on bhagwan says the meaning for arunachala for me was tattvamasi and inwardly i was experiencing the non dual awareness as its meaning something beyond something transcendental but that person who came he for the time being just misinformed me he gave me a, perhaps a, a mediocre interpretation otherwise i would have stayed in madurai because if he would have told arunachala is your atma then bhagwan would have stayed in madurai but he said it is tiruvannamalai it is in the district of tiruvannamalai arunachala is there 
then also bhagwan says i was wondering how a person can go to arunachala and come back this was his wonder see he says it is a place where you can only go you cannot come back one way traffic you enter and disappear but here a person comes like a jeevan mukta he comes out and says i am coming from arunachala so that was his wonder so it was also a mystery for that boy vengatraman so he said arivinai marunurut for the time being my true knowledge was covered clouded why it happened that was also a divine plan bhagwan says that was also a divine plan so that arunachala can pull me from madurai to tiruvannamalai this i came to tiruvannamalai arugurum amayam when i came there achala ma contain i saw the achala tattva the nishala tattva the nirguna tattva so that is true coming to arunachala when you truly come to arunachala it is neither in bus nor in auto it is from you to yourself no space no distance from the mind to the achala tattva hmm? from mind which is so noisy like a kartikeya deepam day <laughs> and you travel to the nishalam the stillness of arunachala in the center in the heart so that is true coming so uh this noble seekers they have the force of vairagya mumukshutva marana bhayam they find that everything else wherever they look they find marana we don't see marana even when it occurs but when viveka comes wherever you look upanishad says any side you turn there is death mrityu dhavati panchamah mrityu is running about dhavati means running here and there mrityu is running about so when you see that intense aspiration comes then only the person becomes a true aspirant intense thirst for freedom comes see that also arises from the self because intuitively you have a clue that there is a state where you can escape otherwise you will not even question so that seed is there inside with that the marana bhayam gives you the impetus the impulse the force to enquire see in bhagwan ramana maharshi's case it all happened in few minutes but generally in every true seeker's case all these things will take long duration like first you will get initiated to nama he heard arunachala that's over but generally people will get the nama and that they will chant 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 for some period along with that they will study the scriptures like periya puranam he read then slowly they will listen to vedanta that i am not the body or mind and make it firm then you have the vision of the death everything is anityam so here bhagwan's case it is death experience because it is so condensed intense like putting uh, a lot of heat into a small ball it was so intense so that happened like the what they call the big bang oru oru minute nimishathula mudinj pedut so uh, that was so quick but generally we are all 
experts in procrastinating so we have our energy is very much less and we enjoy slow walk so for us this viveka becomes vairagya it it becomes fructifies as vairagya and then you find there is no safe place anywhere see when enemies are attacking you want you want a safe place so you are seeking for a safety place secure place and that secure place is aran aran means fortress a fort inside the enemy cannot attack so you are seeking a fort where you will be very peaceful people think that by building a house they will be peaceful that is the beginning of difficulty <laughs> so in tamil uh, veed means house it also means freedom mukti veed means mukti liberation so the real veed the real home Swami Chinmayananda used to say Hari Om Hari Om It is inside you Hari Om Hari Om hmm? That Om is inside you The essence of Thuriya Vastu Is your own heart It is the real fort hmm? This Aran This Shabda It comes in Ulladhin Arpadu then i thought that is the tamil word for fortress but at last when i see bhagavatam aranam prapadye there also in gajendra stuti it is aranam tamimahi there also the arana shabda comes so aran is fortress where sharanam and aranam sharanam and aranam in the aranam you get sharanam so in the fortress of the heart heart is the fortress esha setu upanishad says ahoratrena taratah jagrat swapanena taratah the shruti says neither the waking state nor the dream dream state can break into this dam it is impregnable this heart if waking state can break into this fortress it will bring in all the problems of the waking state the physical problems if the dream state can break into this fortress it will not only bring the mental problems but will bring the problems of all births because all the psychic worlds are in the dream state so this inner self the atma vastu the atman cannot be touched either by action or by thought neither by action nor by thought neither by matter nor by dream stuff it is incorruptible asangohi ayam purushah this is a mahavakya so hence that center is called aran fortress so when the viveki recognizes that what he is seeking nirvikalpa fortress the fortress where no vikalpa can enter it is in his own self it is in his own being then he toils and toils to own it you get a clue of this from guru he can make you experience it perhaps for for a uh, he can give you a glimpse but you have to own it as Swami Brahmananda Ramakrishna's direct disciple he was called Ramakrishna's Manasa putra he was like a son for Ramakrishna after Ramakrishna's mahasamadhi he was doing 
tremendous austerity in Kashi. Then one devotee went to him and when he saw him he asked, Swamiji, why are you doing so much tapasya? Ramakrishna has given you everything. He said, yes, Ramakrishna has given us everything, but we have to own it. He has given, but we have to own it. For that is this tapasya. Manasai Vedam Aptavyam Nehana Nastikinchana By the mind, by the intellect, in its own way, you have to own it. The experience should be like a home where you can enter freely by your choice. Not grace is like that you are taken to some foreign country without visa and passport. The moment you are detected, you will be thrown out. You have to go through proper channel by putting everything in order, putting the mind in order, putting the senses in order, putting uh, everything in order. Unless you do that, you will go there and come back. Even small, small things, when you don't get a cup of coffee, you feel difficult. But if you get a glimpse of that divine thing and come back, it will be terrible. So naturally again and again you go and will knock at the door. Once you get a glimpse. So that is what is happening here. So, Marana Bhava Milla Maheshan Charana Me Sharvar. Here, Bhagavan says that state, Charanam means Padam. Charanam, all represents that state of God experience, which we call Samadhi. Sahaja Nirvikalpa Samadhi, Bhagavan used to say Sahaja Nirvikalpa. The state where there is no duality, where you know that there is neither death nor birth. Marana Bhavam Illa. So that is the charanam of Bhagavan. Charanam pavitram vitatam burana yena putas tarati dushkritani. That charanam is all purifying. It is the primordial beingness. By touching it, you become pure. You become cleansed of all duality. So Maheshan charanam, the feet of Shiva, the feet of Ishvara. Means that state, Charaname Sharvar, they completely take refuge, they hold on to that feet. Means what? They hold on to that state. It is a poetical expression, feet. You cannot hold any outer feet because the feet is not visible. So, Charana Shabda, Pada Shabda, Padyate Bhagavan Ena, by which you attain Bhagavan is Pada. So, Charanam is also like that. That in Upanishad Bhashyam, somewhere it comes, Charanam. Hmm? Uh, Ramaniya Charanaha, Kapuya Charanaha. Hmm? When uh, our name was decided as Ramana Charana Tirtha, like that, Shakatapuram, that Swami Krishnananda Tirtha Swamiji said, it comes in the Upanishad, Ramana Charana, Ramaniya Charanaha, like that. So the Shruti says, Ramana Shabda is for Jnanam. Hmm? And Charana Shabda is also for Jnanam. Ramaniya means that which is beautiful, that which is auspicious, that which is free. So, Marana Bhava Milla Maheshan Charana Me Sharvar Tam Sharvod Tam Shavutrar They will see, you will get a glimpse of that state. But to remain there, to have your home there, to become a, they call Kshetra Sanyasa. After some period, Kunji Swami took Kshetra Sanyasa. Kshetra Sanyasa means uh, no more going out of Thiruvannamalai. Not getting into any vehicle, not going anywhere. That is Kshetra Sanyasa. It's a Sampradaya. After some period, sometimes they will take Kshetra Sanyasa. So he took Kshetra Sanyasa. Like that, the Anveshaka, the Mumukshu also, 
finds the inner kshetra the heart and gives up all other things no other going out that happens only when tam sharvod tam shavutrar tam sharvod along with their vasanas latent tendencies and attachments tam shavutrar the jiva bhava the individuality the ego sense the effect of ignorance is completely annihilated shavadavar then you then they realize that i also is gone this this i is the chidabhasa according to the vedanta it is called chidabhasa means it is a reflected consciousness it is not real hmm? it is associated with the body mind but the real being has no association with the body mind it's a foregone conclusion says bhagwan so this chidabhasa is unreal but it will remain as long as you are alive for a jnani he perfectly knows that this chidabhasa is not me and this chidabhasa of a jivan mukta also will continue like for olden period he will say i am feeling cold i am feeling heat i am giving feeling pain i am feeling hunger that also he will say but who is saying that it is not the real i it is the chidabhasa it is just a reflection and then you we might ask what is the difference everyone but the the thing is he knows the chit he knows the adhishthana in which this chidabhasa is only an appearance and the chidabhasa is needed as long as the body is there it will continue to exist but for him he has no association with chidabhasa he is the sakshi the chit the swarupa the adhishthana so along with all attachments the chidabhasa also becomes lifeless tam shavutrar shavadavar then they know that i am deathless i have no death death is impossible and they attain the eternal state the eternity the completion purnatva so this is the second mangalacharana shloka second mangalacharana shloka there is a poem also in the english swatmasuki commentary when the battle was over the war was lost the poem is named the holy war when the battle was over the war was lost and in that defeat was my victory i fought and fought only to perish on the ashes of my dead self was the resurrection of the divine the fight was indeed a noble one in which the warrior was crucified to death and that death was another name for god truth or love this is a poem from on the wings of ecstasy it's a selection from there so two mangala charana shlokas are over now we enter the temple player namaskaram aniyachu apra yaar varuva or guru also now we enter the real body of the work and here the link is parvai share parvai means the seer the seen with the senses turned outward the senses are in contact with this drishya prapancha you are seeing you are hearing you are smelling you are tasting you are touching all these five operations are there all these are all these become the world and this is our world naam ulagam kandalal this ulagam 
லோகா பிகம்ஸ் ஊ யூ ஆட் ஊ அண்ட் பிகம்ஸ் உலகம் நாம் உலகம் காண்டலால் நானாவாம் சக்தி உள ஓர் முதலை ஒப்பல் ஒரு தலையே நாம உரு சித்திரமும் பார்ப்பானும் சேர்ப்படமும் ஆருளியும் அத்தனையும் தானாம் அவனுலகு கர்த்தன் உயிர் நாம் வி சின்ஸ் வி டைரக்ட்லி பர்சீவ் த ஃபிசிக்கல் வேர்ல்டு தட் இஸ் த திங் விச் வி நோ வி சி தட் த வேர்ல்ட் இஸ் தேர் and question comes where from it arose from that only all the scientific enquiries and theories and mystifying facts are all coming like big bang theory very very interesting theories many things you know um they say everything was first condensed it is as if like in a small ball you put everything so much of heat was there so much of energy was there so much matter was there and it was full of heat when they explain this i feel they are talking the upanishad in another way tapasa chiyate brahma a brahman was expanding with tapas tapas means heat tato and from that the matter came time came space came energy came they say tato annam abhijayate அன்னாத் பிராணா தபஹா சத்தியம் லோகா கர்மசுச்சாமிர்தம் எவ்ரி திங் ஸோ திஸ் அவுட்வர்ட்லி ஆல் திஸ் என்கொயரிஸ் ஆர் ஆல் ஹேப்பனிங் பிகாஸ் யூ ஆர் சீங் த வேர்ல்டு யூ ஹாவ் டு கிவ் சம் எக்ஸ்பிளனேஷன் வேர் ஃப்ரம் ஆல் திஸ் வேர்ல்டு கேம் சம் ஸ்டோரி மஸ்ட் பி டோல்டு சம் ஸ்டோரி மஸ்ட் பி டோல்டு there is a very very funny story uh, where a child wanted to listen to some katha and grandfather started telling a story in half lull sleep so he said there was a big elephant this child asked our village who created this village this is the question that the child asked and grandfather said you know the nearby village the child said yes in that nearby village there was a girl who was only your age she was 4 years old some name and that child one day <coughs> wanted to eat a mango so there was a mango tree the child went up the mango tree and while taking the mango a ripe mango fell down but before the child came down an elephant of that village which was standing underneath the tree ate the mango see this story is for the creation of the village hmm so the elephant swallowed the mango the ripe mango the child got very angry because the elephant belonged to the child their family so she said why have you done this it is my mango give me and holding to the trunk of the elephant it started pulling the elephant opened its mouth this is a story the child entered the mouth and then when it went inside not only a mango a big village was there inside the elephant stomach and the child took the mango and told that village people we will go out come and taking the entire village the child came out of the elephant through the other door <laughs> and the old man told this is how our village came that is why this village is called anai mangai puram this is the story 
it is called a village which is connected to ane means elephant manga means mango so manga and mango has some connection so that is it <laughs> so some question is asked some answer is given that's all for creation everything some question kel par kel vikki vidai in kaivalya navanitam there is i think you ask a question i will give you answer don't ask whether the answer is perfect <laughs> hmm? so that is it so namulagam kandalal we are seeing this world and there are manifold forces manifold powers nana shakti everywhere you see forces are there outwardly forces physical forces are there energetic currents are there psychic current is there within and undetected currents are being found out by the science for example like the disc uh, discovery of electricity in invention of electricity the, the everything so these forces becomes active like that so many forces are there in the world achintya rachana vaibhavam as sangracharya puts it the world is achintya means unthinkable unthinkable rachana means creation and vaibhavam means the glory the power so that is the world that we see nam ulagam kandalal because you see so much force so much power how much force and power must be there in the source with a little bit brain you a scientist is knocking at the door of existence and try to know what is beyond and get some knowledge so the existence can give you so much knowledge how much it should be containing you have love you have affection you have peace how much peace and love must be there in the source certainly it cannot be matter matter is insensitive lifeless anything that from which you have come should be certainly more glorious than you is simple logic it can never be lower than you because it should contain from nothing nothing will come it should contain more love it should contain more peace it should contain more something so that non dual beingness no and but people cannot infer such a force even anumana does not work there so they everyone accept that there is a supreme force supreme power nana va shakti ulla but uh, according to the maturity of your brain you will imagine one boy asked his grandfather who is god and his grandfather told him he is supremely powerful he is with lot of love and very very knowledgeable all those things his grandfather told the boy and the boy told i know who he is who is that you know who is that is a chupu tata <laughs> that was his grandfather's father he said he is my grandfather who is grandfather's father because he has heard so much story about him and he started imagining he is the god so that is how we have all concepts of god all kind of idea about god but everything is okay you can imagine no you are free to imagine anything so nanavam shakti ula or mudal even bhagwan ramana maharshi says i for me god was only shiva with shulam and all that only that concept i had 
but that kind of misconception did not stand as an obstruction for him to realize the truth as long as we are children let us be children no problem you can have such imaginations like that uh, our osur has come out of the stomach of an elephant you can imagine what is the problem nothing is wrong we are already very overcrowded by this logical people rational people too much logic the head becomes heated so better call all these logic people tell these stories <laughs> from a coconut came out taj mahal something that we can say something so like that we can say so this is the so bhagwan here says everyone accepts that there is a force behind this creation nana vam shakti ulla it is omnipotent what they call omnipotent omniscient we don't know how that derivation comes all knowing and all powerful they call omnipotent omniscient swami ramatirtha says both contain om <laughs> saptami vibhakti omni <laughs> omnipotent omniscient all knowledge in om all power in om so naam ulagam kandalal as we are seeing the ulagam the loka loka means in sanskrit it is loka that is the word and the derivation is lokyate iti loka that which is seen and the root dhatu is you see the dhatu is look in english you are using only that dhatu l o o k look to see and the dhatu the root is look and in sanskrit it becomes loka that which is seen ஆலோக்கியத்தை லோக்கியத்தை இது லோக்கா அண்ட் ச தமிழ் சம்டைம்ஸ் யூ நோ சர்டன் சான்ஸ்கிரிட் வேர்ட்ஸ் தே வில் டேக் அண்ட் ஆட் புட் அ கேப் தேர் லைக் த ராமா பிகம்ஸ் இராமன் அரங்கநாதன் லைக் தட் ஸோ லைக் தட் ஹியர் ஆல்சோ லோகா பிகம்ஸ் உலகம் உலக நாம் உலகம் காண்டலால் வி ஆர் ஆல் சீயிங் த வேர்ல்ட் வெதர் வி ஆர் ஆல் சீயிங் த சேம் வேர்ல்ட் இஸ் அனதர் கொஸ்டின் நானாவாம் சக்தி உள்ள ஓர் முதல் தெர் இஸ் ஏ சுப்ரீம் ஸ்டஃப் திஸ் பிக் பேங் பீப்புள் தே கால் இட் த காஸ்மிக் வாட் காஸ்மிக் சிங்குலாரிட்டி that is the name that they call the cosmic singularity the non dual thing they call the cosmic singularity nanavam shakti ula or mudal that one thing non dual thing oppal everyone accepts oru talaye in that case everyone's head becomes one oru <laughs> talaye it means everyone accepts that's all oru talaye நாம உரு சித்திரமும் நாம இஸ் நேம் உரு இஸ் ரூபா பிகம்ஸ் உரு உரு ரூபா நேம் ஃபார்ம் திஸ் பிக்சர் ஆஃப் ஆல் நேம்ஸ் அண்ட் ஃபார்ம்ஸ் த வேர்ல்டு பிக்சர் ஆஃப் நேம்ஸ் அண்ட் ஃபார்ம்ஸ் நாம உரு சித்திரம் அண்ட் த பர்சன் ஹூ இஸ் சீயிங் தட் ஃபார்ம் the film is there and you are sitting in the audience the seers chitir parpanum and share padam the screen on which the pictures of names and forms appear the adhishtana the substratum share padam these three things are there in the world some phenomenon happens you there is a seer the scene and the adhishtanam in which the seer and the scene appears like the dream also in dream you see all of you sitting here i am seeing and i am here giving the talk but all the while i am seeing both me and you and the hall everything 
when i wake up only i exist neither the hall exists nor all the people around exist nothing exists so nama uru chitiramum the name form picture parpanum the seer sherpadamum the screen with in which everything happens and not only that aroliyum the light with which it is seen the light of awareness that illumines them the light with which you are able to see the world in dream also you have that light that is why it is called taijasa that person is called taijasa because in the dream you don't have any outer light with the light of the atman you are seeing things so sherpadamum aroliyum everything attanayum all that everything the seer all of you this body this mind and the light with which everything is seen attanayum tanamavan is the mahavakya ulladinar pad everywhere one mahavakya comes tana iruttale hmm? that is one mahavakya like that this is also a mahavakya of bhagavan where he say attanayum tanamavan everything is arunachala and who is arunachala tan tane tane tattva midanai tane kaattuvai arunachala the entire world the seer the light with which everything is seen everything is that atman atman alone exists attanayum tanam avan so this is the great declaration of bhagwan attanayum tanam avan if we forget the entire verse we have to just remember this line attanayum tanam avan whatever you see and the light with which you see is all he hmm? it is all he the process of going from what is perceived by the senses to the direct and immediate awareness of the self is called as tatastha in the shastras tatastha lakshana janmadyasya yatah in brahma sutra that sutra is for that you see the world and you don't see the adhishtana the substrate so from the scene you take the attention towards the seer or you depend upon some scene and from there to seer even in bhagwan's case he took arunachala and then from arunachala to atma kandavan yavanana karutinul nad who is the seer i and who is this i what is this i the enquiry went deep within and the i disappeared and only that non dual awareness so the shloka begins with three words we that is the i and the world the loka and the seeing among this we that is the i or consciousness alone is real experience the aham is real experience this can be called a direct experience aparoksham the immediate experience with that light only you see the world the world is what we perceive through the senses it is pratiti this may also be called pratyaksham or that which is only sensory perception the direct and immediate experience of i the aham is reality it is in this awareness that the world is perceived an immeasurable power arising from this reality and expanding as the mind and the senses and manifesting itself as the world is called creation in sanskrit it is called sarga projection something projects it is inevitable that we need to acknowledge a power which is the cause for this manifestation uladunil aladila adishaya shakti bhagwan says in you exists a power which is not different from you which is not separate from the but this same power this power is called maya also mayam tu prakritim vidyat mayinam tu maheshwaram hmm? in faint light one mistakes a garland for a snake and is frightened this fear is based on an illusion at this illusion veils our intellect and without affecting the garland in any way projects projects it as a snake this veiling does not affect the seer this veiling is the defect of the intellect 
Once light comes, the garland is seen as it is, and the vision of the snake disappears. In the same way, one wakes up to the grace of the Guru. Ignorance vanishes. Non-dual awareness shines forth. And the three, the triputi is removed. So this is the thing where Bhagavan says, the self, the Atman appears as the world, Atman appears as me, Atman appears as the knowledge, the knowing sense with which you recognize. Everything is same. There is no light separate from the self. It is light. So this poem also, this verse also has a poem in the end. This is also from On the Wings of Ecstasy. The dawn came in the horizon. And unveiled were all forms. When the veil was lifted, all the names too vanished. Everyone was he, he alone. Atanayum tanam avan. The joy of the vision, the vision. It was a perception divine. Unknown hitherto to the mind. All the dualistic castles fell down. All frightening creatures of darkness vanished anon from the sight, from sight. Who beheld the vision? It is a mystery. No seer and the seen, nor he or she or I. One solidified mass of peace, the great release, eternal relaxation, nirvana. So this is a poem. The, with this, we are finishing the first verse in Ullathin Arpath. Now we will see the second, other, third verses in the next talk. Aruna Chala Shiva, Aruna Chala Shiva, Aruna Chala, Aruna Chala Shiva, Aruna Aruna Chala Shiva Aruna Eto Mamatma Bhavasito Meva Tato Navachim Mamakinjitasti Atata Vishtam Kurumam Tatheva Tuam Atmanatham Ramanam